this Sunday remind us of the manna in the desert, prefigure the true bread from heaven, the Eucharist. The readings also remind us that just as our ancestors in the desert longed for a sign of God's faithfulness, so too the crowds around Jesus asked for a sign that they might see and believe. We come to the table of the Lord to encourage and deepen our own faith, to become what we receive, to become a sign of Jesus' presence in the world. Let us begin our liturgy by welcoming all who are visiting us today. If you are a visitor, please stand so that we may welcome you to Holy Spirit Parish. Anybody? Now let us welcome each other in the love of Christ. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I must begin this morning by introducing these two men over here. This one's Father Frank, this one's Father Mike, and we just celebrated 33 years of living Capuchin life together. Our, our anniversary was back in the middle of July, but this is the first time that we have a chance to get together. So after mass, we're going to lunch. We might even, we might even, is that, is that funny? <laughs> we might even visit the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, so please give them a Holy Spirit Parish kind of welcome. They are, right now. They are not only classmates, but they are truly very dear friends. So I'm, I'm happy to welcome them and share their loveliness with you. As for this liturgy, we come always to give thanks to God and to bring our cares and our concerns before the Lord. And there are many, many incredibly serious concerns, problems, issues, in, in our city, in, in our country, in, in our world. 
you know, for example, that, that, that chaos of reuniting families, children with, with, with parents, it, it, it's, not, it's not going anywhere. So we need to pray. So let's bring that and bring all those things that are on our minds and hearts about our own lives and our world, place them before the Lord at the altar, and ask him not only for his help, but for every grace that we need so that we can respond with loving, compassionate actions that help God accomplish what God wants to accomplish. Lord Jesus, you are the bread come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with the bread of everlasting life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy our hungry hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King oh God Almighty Father glory to God and high God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Let us pray.
Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as our creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came down and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all over the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there was on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven 
and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to start today with those booklets that, there are, that are at the end of your pews. You don't have to pick one up now, but when it's convenient, please. Um, they're on both sides of the aisles, and if we run out, the ushers in the back have, have several more. So take one if you want, take it home with you. Take two or three, give, give them to anybody you want. They're, they're here for the taking and I can make more very quickly. I think I've finally figured out how to use our copy machine across the, across the driveway. So th th this is what this is. This is the entirety of chapter six in the Gospel of John. We started reading chapter six last Sunday, and we continue reading it today and for three more Sundays. Last week, it started with Jesus' miracle multiplying five loaves of bread and a couple of fish to feed 5,000 people. And after that miracle, this is the place in his gospel where St. John places his major teaching on the Eucharist. When John gets to the Last Supper later, he takes another angle on the Eucharist, and that's you know, what we commemorate on Holy Thursday night, the washing of the feet. But when it comes to the bread that we eat and the wine that we drink from the altar and what it means for our life in, in God and, and with each other, this is where, chapter 6, this is where St. John places that extensive teaching. So it was just something of a whim this week that I decided to reprint the entire chapter for anybody who wants one or who wants to take a copy to anybody because it is a deep and, and a dense teaching. You read it over and over and over again and you learn something new every time. And you'll see that I, I put a very wide margin on the right side of every page just to give you space to make some notes, write a prayer, ask a question, but the entirety of John chapter 6 is, is in this little thing. And we're going to get into it deep today and for three more Sundays. So take one, please, read it, read it over and over, pray it, write your own prayers in that extra wide margin, give it to anybody whom you think would be interested or could use it. So in, in today's section that we read, just read by Deacon, verses 24 to 35, the first thing that baffles me, the first thing that baffles me about this conversation that begins between Jesus and the crowd is that they ask Jesus in verse 30, what sign, what sign can you do for us so we can believe? What, what sign can you do? He's just fed thousands of people with a couple of loaves of bread. I say, really? What sign can you do? And that miracle turned out to be far more bread than they could finish. 
12 wicker baskets left over? They ask, what, what, what sign can you do? And while we, we won't read it in church during these, these weeks, you, you'll, you'll, you'll see it here if you look at it, that, that, that right after last Sunday's section and before today's, Jesus was walking on water. And that's why today's selection begins with that sense of confusion from the crowd. Rabbi, wh- wh- how did you get here? When did you get here? What sign can you do? Really? Here's what he can do. It's happening here in this church today. It's happening in every church, Catholic church, every church in this city, every church around the world, that a woman walks in she takes her usual seat. She, she mouths the words of the prayers and tries to, to participate in the singing of the hymns and acclamations, but her thoughts are a million miles away because she's thinking of her daughter. And how can she make her daughter realize that she's making a big mistake? That she's heading down a road that can only lead to pain and anguish and regrets. At the appropriate time, she leaves her pew, she comes forward to to, to receive the Eucharist, and as she places the host in her mouth, the body of Christ, the Lord Jesus says to her, just be there for your daughter. Just be there, like I'm here for you. In a similar way, in every Catholic church around this city and around the world today, a very angry man comes in and takes his seat. He's angry at the disease which is slowly taking his wife away from him. He's angry at the doctor's who discovered this cancer way too late to do anything about it. He's angry at God for letting all of this happen. He comes forward, takes the Eucharist in his hands, the body of Christ, the sacrament of Christ the healer. And our Lord Jesus says to him, don't look for me in this disease. I am not in death. I'm with you in the loving kindness of your family, your friends who are reaching out to you. And I will be there to take your lovely wife's hand when it comes time for you to let her go. In every Catholic church around the world today, A very confused teenage girl comes in and she sits down with her family. And she's confused because her boyfriend is pressuring her into having sex with him. And she can't think of a good reason to say no anymore. I mean, she she, she loves him. She thinks she does. He's sweet to her. She wants to know him better. She wants him to know her better. She doesn't understand anymore why it would be wrong. She takes the body of Christ and consumes it. And Jesus says to her, even when you are confused, trust the truth that you have been taught. Because the day will come when you do understand, and you will be glad that you waited. In every Catholic church in this city and around the world today, a wealthy man takes his seat, a man who has taken care of himself very well, but seems not quite to notice anybody else. 
He comes to the altar to receive the Eucharist, and Jesus says to him, just like I have become bread for you, and I sustain you and take care of you, so you must become bread to others and help me sustain them. As I've been lifted up for your sake, you must help me lift others up too. In every Catholic church in this city and around the world today, we gather, we take our seats, the poor, the forgotten, the traumatized, the wealthy, and, and, and everything in between, sinners, all of us, all fed with the same bread that sustains every need. I am not suggesting that the Eucharist is a quick fix. It's not an instant solution to every problem. That's what the crowd wanted in the gospel today. You know, they had eaten their fill, and they come back for more. They're driven by their stomachs. Do, do that again. Give us this bread always. It's not a quick fix, the Eucharist. If it's going to sustain us, nourish us, we have to work. We open not, not just our hands to receive the Eucharist, but we have to open our, our hearts, our minds, the totality of, of who we are and become what we receive. If we eat the body of Christ, we have to become the body of Christ. And that's an everyday effort. In the Eucharist, Jesus speaks to us in those ways that I've described. He challenges us, he comforts us, he assures and forgives us. In the one bread, he gives each one of us whatever nourishment we need. So if we are to hear what the Lord says and receive that nourishment that he wants to give to us, we have to root our lives in a relationship with the Lord. And that's where something like this thing just might be a little bit helpful to us or to somebody you know. If we're attentive to the Lord in our lives and we give our relationship with God the attention that it deserves faithfully every day, then we will hear what the Lord says when we take him into ourselves and he has a word for us. We become what we receive. We become gentle. We become loving. We become generous, nourishing, wise, and merciful. We become Jesus. We become Christian. It is possible, brothers and sisters, to receive the Eucharist and receive no nourishment. If our encounter with the Lord here is to be everything it can be, we have to know who it is whom we are encountering. And we know him by being attentive to him and fostering a relationship with him every day. It's worth the effort. Because when, when we need a friend to turn to, when we need some sustenance and we don't know where to find it, there is no better friend, there is no better nourishment that satisfies like the bread offered here. Give us this bread always, they said to him. Give us this bread always. And Jesus' response was, I myself am the bread of life. I myself am the bread. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will ever thirst again. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, give us this bread always. Amen. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, together, we profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God and the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, and begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the, on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God provides every nourishment and sustenance we need, we confidently bring our prayers before him. For the church, for grace to be bread for others, to satisfy the hunger of the world with the generosity of our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and our leaders, for those who work to create public policy, and for those who negotiate compromises, for resolve among all peoples to never again take up nuclear arms, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For courage among us to speak for those who have no voice, to protect the poor, the hungry, the child in the womb, the immigrant at our door, for courage that champions all life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who grumble and struggle with daily life, who are distracted by worry and doubt, for grace to trust that in the embrace of God's love, we will never go hungry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who live with addiction, for those who struggle with mental illness or depression, for all the sick of our parish community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they be raised up on the glory of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Gwen Harding, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, relying on you for every sustenance, that we need, we ask you to hear these prayers and to fill our world with your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bread of heaven sent down from glory many things you were on earth 
a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, yeah. Many things. You are the living awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. Let the church say amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. accept the sacrifice of our hands. Praise in the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God. You love the human race, and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior. Save us, Savior. Of the world. Of the world. For by your cross. For by your cross. And resurrection. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people whom you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. And there, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us share with one another a sign of Christ. Sin. 
sins of the world, have mercy on us.
Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those whom you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for us, make us worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. One, one more shake out to my classmates and friends here, please. Huh? Thank you. Please. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by living his gospel. Amen. Amen.